Because we live in a world where the information has become more accessible than ever, this movement is all about... Welcome back to another quick self-help video. Today, I'm going to share with you my vision about the new rising generation. I've been thinking whether I should talk about this topic or not, as I kept telling myself that this is not the main direction of this channel. I've always considered that these kinds of topics are too new agey, and because of that, they are not practical enough. Because I get the chance to interact with so many teenagers, I realize that this phenomenon has already started to happen, and it cannot be left aside anymore. Whether you are a parent or a teenager, this episode will help you understand what this movement is all about and how you can transform it into an asset instead of denying it. Watch this video until the end. I promise you'll get tremendous benefits by understanding what I'm going to talk about. Okay, so what do I mean by the new rising generation? We can substitute that by saying the Generation Z, or the iGen. These names are not made up. You can actually search them on Google, as they are scientifically recognized. People from this generation were born between 1995 and 2012. However, keep in mind that these dates are just an approximation, as nobody can tell for sure when a generation begins and ends. So what changes are exactly taking place? To make things easier for you to understand, I want to introduce you to a concept I learned from Stephen Covey by reading the book called The Seven Principles of Highly Effective People. At the beginning of the book, he talks about what a paradigm is and how that's important in one's life. Every human being perceives the world in its own unique way, and the culture that the individual is exposed to has the biggest influence over one's perception. We make assumptions based on what we have been programmed to believe since we were young. We don't question much, and that is because we cannot comprehend. Or, most likely, we don't even know that there is something more besides what we can see, because the culture has failed to mention these things. Think of the paradigm as a virtual reality headset. Each time you change the headset, a new software has been delivered to you, and you get a different perspective. Therefore, your assumptions about the world will change. The way we see things is the source of the way we think and the way we act. Your current running paradigm is the sum of all your experiences, thoughts, beliefs, assumptions, and childhood programming. You perceive the world as you do because of that, or, better said, because you were conditioned to see it that way. Do not make the mistake to consider that your current virtual reality headset is the actual territory. There is something more than that. Another good analogy we can use to describe what a paradigm is, is by comparing it with a pair of lenses. Each time you change the lenses, everything changes. Your beliefs, your assumptions, your perspective, everything will be different and that is defined as a paradigm shift. A change in one's beliefs, assumptions, understanding, thinking, perspective, and interpretation is defined as a paradigm shift, and that is what is currently happening with the Generation Z. The main operating paradigm of humans is the materialist paradigm, which means that we naively believe that the world is made out of atoms and molecules. Because we have been indoctrinated since we were little to believe such a thing, we don't question too much the validity of this particular assumption. Most of the people won't even take into consideration this possibility, and that only shows how close-minded they are. What we have learned from quantum physics is that the world is not made out of atoms and molecules, yet only a few individuals manage to understand the significance of these discoveries. The fathers of quantum physics concluded not very long ago that there is no such thing as matter and that the world is not physical. Acknowledge that that was their paradigm shift, all their old assumptions, programming, and beliefs were deconstructed by their discoveries. Now that I've made it clear for you what a paradigm is and what a paradigm shift is, let's talk about how this is related to the new generation. Because we live in a world where the information is more accessible than ever, this movement is all about knowing. It is about coming out from the darkness. It is about leaving the old beliefs behind and heading towards a better and holistic understanding. I see many people becoming interested in things like meditation, yoga, and they show a genuine interest in self-help topics. All these things point to a shift in consciousness. This shift is about freedom and deconstructing old beliefs. The Generation Z has started to question more and more everything that has been taught to them, and that is a good thing. Questioning is the only way we can bring light over darkness. To elaborate more on this idea, I am going to use a psychological model called spiral dynamics to make things easier to understand. This model is generally used to describe the evolution of mankind on a personal and collective level. Spiral dynamics highlights the stages of human development 
based on their values, and it has eight stages of development. The spiral dynamics can become a very effective tool in understanding the human behavior if it is used correctly. I know that it sounds a bit abstract, but I will explain everything in just a moment. Each stage of development is labeled with a different color. The first stage is represented by the color beige, and it ends at turquoise. Look at the picture. You can now see the colors and a very broad description of each level. This model contains two tiers. The first tier begins at stage beige, and it ends at stage green, whereas the second tier starts at stage yellow, and it ends at stage turquoise. This is a very complex model, and it will take me many hours to explain everything about it. However, for the purposes of this video, I will only explain the basics you need to know in order to follow my initial statement. Let's start by giving you a very brief idea about each stage. I will roughly go over the first three stages as most of you guys are above these levels. Another important thing I want to mention before we start discussing the stages is that an individual can vary in the level of development they are at. For example, someone might have a set of values from the stage blue in proportion of 70% and the other 30% of their values could easily belong to stage orange. There are very high chances that an individual possesses a combination of values from two or three stages. Okay. Let's discuss the actual stages now. The first stage is represented by the color beige, and this is the most primitive and undeveloped stage of them all. Here, an individual is derived only by his instincts. The only thing that a person values at this stage is their survival. They don't communicate much unless their survival is threatened. The next stage on the spiral dynamics is stage purple. Here, an individual starts to communicate more, and it starts to form communities. The people who live in tribes are a very good description of what this stage is all about. Things start to get a little bit more complicated at stage red. There are a few countries and individuals who are still operating under this set of values. People at this stage value power, and a good analogy you can think of if you want to understand this particular stage is by thinking of criminals. If you have ever seen a movie like The Godfather, Scarface, or The Sopranos, a movie about the old Italian mafia, you could easily understand stage red because those types of movies are a very good reflection of this particular stage. Moving upwards on the psychological model, the next stage we encounter is stage blue. And here, things start to get a little bit more interesting, because 40% of adults on the globe are at this stage. Again, an individual may vary, and it may not be fully blue. It may as well have some of the orange values, or, in some cases, some of the red values. However, at this stage, an individual values things like religion, ideologies, beliefs, laws, justice, discipline, duty, hard work, morality, patriotism, the Bible, the Quran. They tend to pray to God, or any other divine figure for that matter, for the things they want, and they believe that there is a higher authority who has divine rule over their life. These individuals or collectives develop a strong sense of morality because they are afraid they will be punished by the divine authority who rules their lives. The individuals at stage blue have strict church attendance. They value family and tradition. The mentality that blue people have is sort of, I'll be a good boy in this life, so when I die, I'll go to heaven. The next stage, stage orange, is all about capitalism and individualism. Here, an individual becomes aware of the limitations of the previous level, and now he is more concerned about his own success. Their mentality is more of, I do anything I can to win. If there are any tricks or schemes available, they are not concerned anymore with the absolute judge with a capital A and capital J who will punish them afterwards. I would say that most of the Western countries operate under this set of values. The things that are valued most by these individuals or collectives are rationality, science, material goods, achievement, success, excellence, improvement, efficiency, progress, optimization, becoming number one, and being the best. Think of this stage as the corporate stage. Everything that corporations do to survive on the market is a very good analogy to describe stage orange. Most of the people on this planet are somewhere between blue and orange, or between orange and green. I would argue that the countries in the Middle East are somewhat at stage blue, while Europe and America are somewhere at stage orange. However, that may vary, and it might not always be the case as some countries in Europe and some states in the U.S. are still operating under some of the blues values. The next stage in the spiral dynamics is stage green. And you may think of this stage as the movement that took place in the 60s and 70s with the hippies. 
At this stage, an individual values community, love, empathy, intimacy, kindness, pacifism, and free hugs. Green people start to care more about the others, develop compassion, like to live in harmony, and they like to share ideas and feelings. Green people are open-minded, and they do not dismiss things like soul, spirit, reincarnation, channeling, readings, mysticism, alternative healing, or many other new agey concepts. Green is concerned about the success of the community and the world. Unlike Stage Orange, whose concerns were only about the self, Tesla, the charities and other companies who think of sustaining the planet instead of destroying it, are a good example you can think of to understand Stage Green. Netherlands is another good example of what a country or collective at Stage Green looks like. So, that is the first tier. And now it is time to talk about the second tier. Unlike the first tier, the second tier opens up to a holistic understanding about reality. Tier 2 realizes that one's perspective is partial, and the individuals at this tier are concerned with the problems of mankind instead of just focusing on themselves. Stage yellow people are usually lonely because only 1% of the population is at this level of development. Yellow is concerned with understanding reality, and it starts to think from a higher perspective. Yellow values things like open-mindedness, creativity, thinking outside the box, understanding, complexity, new ounce thinking, purpose, and developing a big picture understanding. As key distinctions between yellow and the previous stages, I can say that yellow becomes aware of himself and is non-judgmental. The individuals at this stage develop a complex thinking because they can now connect the dots. They understand that everything is interconnected. Finally, the last stage, stage turquoise, is the most advanced stage in one's psychological development. The individuals at this stage become one with everything else. The world is seen as a whole. There are no boundaries, and there are no limits. Everything is connected to everything else. This level is what I like to call the godlike level. People at this stage value surrender, acceptance, natural joy, unconditional love, being, simplicity, flowing with nature and effortless action. You won't see many turquoise people on the TV or in the media simply because their values and their paradigm is so different from most of the people as they are seen as diluted. People at this level are usually gurus, spiritual community leaders, and natural healers. Sad Guru is a good example you can think of to understand this stage turquoise. Now, you may be wondering, when does a stage emerge? Well, it does that when it becomes aware of its limitations. People tend to emerge to the next stage when they realize that their values are limited and they won't serve them anymore. Do not make this mistake to use this model to judge the other people. That is not its purpose. Do not think that a stage is better than the other. Use this model as a map. Use it to develop a big picture understanding about the things around you. What I want you to understand is that culture plays a vital role in one's psychological development as the programming comes at a very young age. The problem with your beliefs and assumptions is that they construct your reality, and that is your worldview. That is your paradigm. The way I explain this model is an oversimplified way of doing it. However, I decided to use the spiral dynamics to highlight the importance of a paradigm in the development of human beings. So, how are these paradigms connected anyhow with Generation Z? And why do you need to know all of this? It isn't about a certain paradigm or a certain stage. It is about a change. What I want you to understand from this video is that people will evolve no matter what set of values they might have, where they are standing on the spiral dynamics, or what their current paradigm is. The Generation Z has a big potential to shift to a newer and more advanced level thanks to all the information available. No matter what their current level of development is, they will experience a shift in consciousness over the next decades. What made me talk about this topic is my own experience. What happened to me along my journey when my default paradigm changed is that I thought I was going crazy as none of my friends, family members, colleagues, or the people I was interacting with couldn't relate to the things I was telling them about reality. I realized why they couldn't relate to me and that these things were completely normal only after I stumbled upon Stephen Covey's book and I learned about what a paradigm is. In that moment, I realized that my family, my friends, and most of the people around me were operating under the same outdated paradigm. If you find yourself in a situation like this, if you are experiencing a paradigm shift, don't let yourself be discouraged by the people around you. The best thing you can do is to follow your intuition as you are the only one who knows what is best for you.
write your comments down below if you have any questions. I would love to hear your thoughts about this. Thank you for watching this video, and if you find value in this content, please click that like button for me and share this video with a friend. The last thing I want to tell you for today is to stay tuned for more videos if you really want to experience a paradigm shift. By exposing you to new information every week, your understanding about reality will deepen. Subscribe to this channel right now and keep learning. Check out our Instagram page and find your daily inspiration right there. Stay well, stay focused, and happy.